Hey, what's going on guys? Serp Enthusiast here, and today, welcome back to a new video. Today is going to be a feeding day. We have a few species on the list that we'd like to get fed today. Those would be my reticulated poison dart frogs, my European fire salamanders, that are captive bred by the way, as well as my western toad. Now, two of those species I haven't actually announced officially on the channel yet, but today is the day that you'll see them in action. So, without further ado, let's get right on into it. This right here is my dart frog tank. These guys are Renitomea amazonica, which is a very small thumbnail species of dart frog native to South America. They are not out currently right now, but as soon as we throw these Drosophilia hydei fruit flies in there, they'll be going crazy. There we go, we put a bunch of fruit flies in there and my small male right here is actually already going after them. Look at that. This is actually my first dart frog species that I've worked with and it's been an absolute pleasure. They're super active, super bold, very, very pretty frogs. All right, guys, this is my European fire salamander setup. These guys are an incredibly rare species in the U.S., especially captive bred. This is the salamandra salamandra salamandra. That's its actual scientific name. This is a one-to-one -one adult pair, so these guys will be ready to breed next year, and if I'm lucky, I should have some captive bred offspring. This is the female that you're looking at right now, and the male is over here. <laughs> now, these guys are a drier species as far as salamanders go. Uh, they don't like too moist of, of dirt and substrate, so they do stay fairly dry in here, but I do miss them every now and then. These guys are absolutely incredible eaters, just like most of my animals, and <laughs> they're honestly a blast to watch. So let's get into it, shall we? We have... A bunch of earthworms right here which these are their staple diet and they absolutely love them now these are a much drier species of salamander they actually don't like the substrate to be too moist that's why most of the moss and the plants in here aren't doing so well because I have to keep it relatively dry just so that these guys will fare a little bit better and it looks like he missed his worm right behind you there buddy here, hold on. Let me see if I can help him out here. Get it. Come on. There we go. This is the female right here, as I mentioned. The male is still over here, hiding underneath the log, and we'll get his worm here in a second. Let's watch this girl get her worm down. These guys are very, very aggressive feeders when it comes to worms like this, and I absolutely love watching them. They're incredibly entertaining to watch. Let's 
like this guy is actually coming out because he knows what time it is. <laughs> Let's get a worm for him, shall we? All right, there we go. I just kind of dropped it in the water there. Let's see if he notices it. These guys are pretty derpy and dumb, if I'm gonna be honest with you. But once they see that worm, it's over. Let's see if he gets it. There we go, he, go, he almost got it. <laughs> they are not too smart at all. There we go. He's gonna tear that worm into pieces now. Like I said, they're very, very entertaining to watch. All right, this is Irwin, the Western Toad. This guy is also a very, very incredible eater, and he also loves himself a diet of earthworms and night crawlers. So we're gonna get him going with one of those bad boys. All right, so I placed a good sized earthworm in there for him, and it looks like he's already spotted it. He's just gonna go straight on after it, <laughs> just like that. He's even more aggressive than the fire salamanders are, if I'm being honest. <laughs> he just slurps that thing right down, doesn't he? Erwin is one of my personal favorites ever since I got him a little while ago. He has just been an absolute pleasure to keep. Essentially, his enclosure consists of a small water portion as well as a land portion and a nice little cave down there for him to sleep in and to do whatever he wants in. The water is mainly for him to cool off and for him to soak and all that sort of thing. And I also just have the land portion because, you know, they're toads and they're terrestrial. We are going to feed Irwin here one more worm. And let's see if he will go for it, even though he's completely facing the wrong direction. There we go. Bada bing, bada boom. He is a beast, I just gotta say. Toads are honestly one of my favorite animals just because they make such good pets and they're just really fascinating creatures in general. Most toads actually do have uh, toxins contain contained within their body and they are usually released through the parotid gland, which is that large membrane that you see on the outer part of the skin right behind his eye. And they usually have two of these if you're able to see. This particular species of toad actually doesn't have a very strong toxin, but toads such as the Colorado River toad have a very, very strong toxin, which most people use to extract to make uh, psychedelic drugs such as DMT. Not the most uh, ethical practice, but it is done, unfortunately. All right, guys, that's going to conclude today's video. I really hope you enjoyed. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more herp-related content. I will be uploading videos hopefully more often now that I've got a little more time on my hands, but we'll see how it goes. As I said, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, whatever you want to do. And don't forget to check out some of the other videos on my channel. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.